Welcome to Sermon Bay Small Groups, whatever day of the week you're meeting. Welcome to it. Um, I hope this time is a great time for you to grow in the Word, grow in community, and uh, we'll get started. So what is the church's calling? Well, according to Ephesians 3, verse 10, it's to do this. God's intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God would be made known to all the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. One of the callings of the church is to reveal the plan God always had. Now, God is eternal, so he's always been, never not without God, never will be a time without God. God is eternal. God is sovereign. He is all-powerful. He is subject to nothing. Um, and God is also omniscient. And you're like, whoa, what's up with the big terms? But it's really important that we understand this because this week we really talked about how God in Christ Jesus revealed his plan that he's had for all of eternity, which was the death, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Satan thought he was winning the day Jesus died. Satan thought he was winning when Jesus was betrayed, arrested, beaten, mocked. Satan was having a heyday. He didn't realize that God would reveal his plan for redemption and he would even allow Satan to participate and play that role of being the one who murdered Jesus Christ for our sins. What's amazing about that is the wisdom of God is made known through the church. That means that Satan didn't know that we would ever exist. He thought the only people of God there would ever be was the Jewish people. He didn't know that God was going to bring them all together under and through the blood of Christ. So we see that God making known his wisdom to the heavenly realms is that when God fills us with his Holy Spirit, we're living witnesses to Jesus Christ. We are a living witness to his death and resurrection, which Satan thought was a victory, but God knew was his ultimate plan of redemption and his victory. So for us, what can we do? We can remember that God knows everything. He knows your circumstances and God is in control. The enemy, Satan, he doesn't know. He doesn't know what God's plans are. The enemy is finite. He can't even imagine the plans that God has. He can't guess them. So we know that God has won and Satan will not. But there are circumstances and hardships in the Christian life. And what I would like to encourage you with today is your circumstances are not bigger than God. So what I would love for you to know about God is that he's all powerful so that when your circumstances get dire, you can lean into him and trust that the all-knowing God isn't ignorant of your needs, of your fears, and of what bothers you or grieves you. He is still Lord over them and he will use them to bring beauty out of ashes. Of all the people you know, who seems to have the widest expanse of knowledge like, no matter what the topic is, this person seems to know something about it. Who is that person that you know who just seems to know so much? Question number two is this. In uh, Ephesians 3 verse 10, it speaks of rulers in the heavenly realms. Uh, rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. Who do you think they are? Talk about that. In the services this past week, if you were there, you know we really engaged imagination. So I'd like to do that right now. I would like you to imagine what it would have felt like if you would be able to see the arrest the scourging and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Imagine it and take some time and, and talk about that. In verse 16 to, verses 16 to 19, um, it talks about us having God's spirit within us. What do we gain? What do we gain from having God's spirit within us? What can you take away from this scripture that applies to your life? How can you apply this to your life? 
Hopefully you've done the devotions. Maybe you heard the sermon too. Now you're in sermon-based small groups. Take a risk and see how this applies. Talk about it with your group. Check it out. Well, friends, I hope sermon-based small groups went well. I would like to leave you with the uh, words of my friends from a certain movie, The Sound of Music. So long, farewell, the beaters. I don't know the words. <laughs> All right, have a great night, great afternoon, whenever you guys met. I hope your week goes well, and I hope the Word of God is continuing to grow in your life, and you're living as a witness for Christ in this place. Blessings. Have a great day.